Royce the 5'9. I want to send a special shout out to the Trendy Ass Podcast. And we got the lyrical lord in the building, though. Good Royce the motherfucker fire. Nah. Thank you, man. Hey, dog. Lyrical let me lord. Let me, hey, hey lyrical lord, before. fam. You know what? It's like only so many in the state of Michigan can actually say that they lyrical. Fact. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, they rhyme high off words that make them go get higher. <laughs> so, like, when you say, like, wordplay, you make a motherfucker go get a book. Not go get some lean or some cocaine or, you know what I mean? So when I heard Joe shit, it was like a spiritual form that you on more so than a go get high type of motherfucking music. Thank you, man. And I know you did that. that on purpose. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm evolving. I'm evolving. I used to make music about violence, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm evolving. Yes, Never really got into like the whole lean thing, but I used to do Patron crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, but you know what? That's not really a drug. That right there is a drink that a mm -hmm. lot of people should try if they've never <laughs> ever tried a tequila. <laughs> Start off first with the Patron, mm -hmm. then graduate up there to the Don Julio. Start at Patron? Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I like people to fuck up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to see the fucked up part of you, and yeah, then that, that Don Julio going to smooth you out. But go ahead and get fucked up off that Patron so we see how your personality really is. <laughs> so let's, let's get to the, the lyrical Lord part. So I agree. Like, you know, I am. Thank a, you, man. I listen to, I go back to Malcolm Max, to what, Beef, to all that stuff. It was like when you would drop the bar exams. We was tapped in like, oh shoot, what are you rapping on now? Then from that to evolve into, I'm a grown ass man and I can listen to my kids in the car. What do you, what's your approach on feeling like your, your transition? I mean, I just approach it the same way I approach just life. You know what I mean? Like everything that I do creatively is just a reflection of where I am as a man at the time. I used to like posture a little bit. You know what I mean? I used to approach I used to approach the craft like, what do niggas want to hear? You yeah. know what I mean? I quickly learned that that's not really my that's not really my uh the path that I was meant to be on. Okay. I'm more of like a um not saying there's nothing wrong with that, to each his own. It's all entertainment. But for me, things seem to connect better when I'm just when I'm just expressing naturally who I am. Like for a long time I used to like like in the very beginning, when I signed my first deal, like way back in the day, I didn't even know how to make albums, you know what I mean? And it was like a whole lot of stuff about my natural self that I figured people wouldn't be interested in, so I just didn't never go near it. And then it was like, it took me probably 10 years to finally make Book Orion. That's yeah. Crazy. And that's like my self-defining album, just all of the stuff that I thought was boring r resonated the best with people, so. It's funny, because like I say, back to when we was growing up, and you know we'll be uh, listening to all that stuff for sure the bar exams but even before that like i said i worked at uh champs uh i was in briarwood at time ann arbor you had the referee outfit on yeah i, had the referee <laughs> outfit. I thought it was so smooth because i think i made like 12 an hour and i was geek like i'm getting that bread but yeah. we used to uh had a video syndicated mm. through uh corporate and i just always remember this fly dude come on got the leather on you know come on and rock with i'm like i'm just sitting there staring at the tv like damn I got to do something like that. And I was just, you know, finding my pen game at that time. Then, you know, I would hear stuff, you know, and start hearing more and more. Then it would go to the chips on pistons, the great features, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I, I kind of saw myself in that path of you gave people what they want, but then you started giving them what they needed. And like you said, this line was so crazy on grown ass men about stepping on a toy and it never that pain never feels so good mm -hmm. like now that's what i can relate to mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so i, I get what you're saying about that just to make it short and why well, low key you thinking about who you you've been rapping with mm -hmm. you know what i mean you know rapping with with m and some of the people i want to say like you can't be shuffling around Absolutely like you not. know you can't even sit up there and be like hey man you know give me another day <laughs> and, you know i heard your verse fam give me another day on that cuz because I, I know i know some motherfuckers be like yeah just take me up off of that one fam i don't think that uh 
that's going to work. Have you ever been in that element to the point to where you was like, you know what, I don't want to be on this one? Not me, myself, but um, I've been in situations where, where we felt like people were scared to rap with us. You know, because, you know, people are competitive, you know what I mean? And everybody in the game is kind of like guarding their legacy or guarding their whatever that they feel that they're portraying. But it's fake to me. It's like boxing. A lot of these fighters is sweet, but they won't fight each other. Back in the day, Sugar Ray fought Tommy Hearns. Motherfucker Marvin Hagler fought Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray. Roberto Duran fought Sugar Ray, Tommy Hearns. I mean, mm -hmm. like... A lot of people are afraid to go up against talent. And I don't understand it because, man, when I first heard UGK and Jay-Z linking up, I was like, damn, the South with New York? That's the crazy. And the shit was so sweet. Mm -hmm. It was like they kept throwing each other the alley-oop. But I said to myself, them niggas like each other. They cool with each other. Mm -hmm. So... In this game, when you get in the studio, there's a certain type of jail mm -hmm. that comes with that formula. Do you ever feel like sometimes that, you know what, some of these dudes, they ain't trying to jail with us? A whole bunch of times. A whole bunch of times. I mean, it's, it's easier to not jail than it is to jail. Like, whenever I came across, like, situations where I'm, like, really jailing with somebody just, like, as an individual, I try to hold on to them. Like DJ Premier? Yeah. Just a good... Coldest Good in the soul. game, you know what I mean. Coldest, and it's like it's like it, to me, it, it don't really matter. Like, well, I guess it does matter, but it doesn't matter how talented everybody in the room is as much as people think. I think it's more of a vibe thing. Yes, so if everybody be. in the room is vibing, I think the better music will come you out. You saw of, We Are the World when Mike was yeah. over there looking at everybody. Hey, it's too, it was too much. <laughs> too much. That's what just saw, man. Like too too much, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I do feel like um, if everybody stick to their lane, like I know doing a song, you know, I had to write a verse on that song with you, and I was, I'm not gonna lie to you, I probably scrapped about 30 verses. I'm like, man, this nigga. Why? Just because at that time I wasn't as comfortable to be who I am, and mm -hmm. I feel like he's a lyricist, he's intelligent, I gotta be like this. But then I started saying, you know what, I just gotta tell my story, and mm -hmm. that's me then I feel like that's when I make my best music now. Mm -hmm. So so question. So when you are in one of those situations when you wanna, you know, you in the studio with another artist and I know you said like you like to hold on to the ones that jail. So what about the ones, you know, who could jail but like you said, they're in a position where they feeling a little bit intimidated by the bars, by the, you know what I'm saying, the success and all of that. When you peep that do you like just let them like try to work that shit out themselves, or do you, you know what I'm saying, talk to them a little bit, coerce them, coach them a little bit, make them feel a little right, bit right. comfortable, like how you move? Yeah. Because I done heard a lot of people in the studio, they'll just let people like just, because they want the better verse anyway, so they just let their shit flop, like whatever, you gonna feel uncomfortable, I want everybody to know your verse is uncomfortable, or yeah, you know what I'm saying? That, you, that's kind of weak. That's kind of weak. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I would never do that, but I mean, you know, I want to be a part of the best song, you know what I mean? And I don't want nobody like around me, especially not in my studio, around me like feeling uncomfortable. If I know what's going on, of course I I can talk anybody out of that, you know what right. I mean? Because I've been I've been there, just not necessarily in the studio with somebody where I feel like inferior in any way, but I may be in my own head, just like what you were, what you were just explaining. You were just in in your head. As soon as you get out of your head, everything be fine. You know what? Think. Speaking of that, to keep your composure in a game that I think is just totally gone to hell, mm -hmm. what's the remedy for producers that are geniuses to come back to the game and actually be taken serious? Like, you see how Kanye is. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, he out there... Got his little wife slave everywhere and shit, you know what I mean? He wants to drop more music, but how do you actually look at certain artists, like far as you working with them, knowing he been tagged now? Mm -hmm. He been tagged as crazy than a motherfucker. Undesirable. <laughs> but he's still a genius. Like you ask anybody, I mean anybody, they, they call him a genius on the lines of, I'm talking about like, 
what geniuses is. You talking about Kanye still? Yeah, they, I mean, like I, agree. They, I mean, I've literally seen people literally worship him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I know them church people done changed up. Now they see he got he got his wife out there half naked all the time. Like, remember he was with the church people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, where, 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 the, where the people at? I don't see them with none of the nakedness going on. <laughs> but you as an artist, do you feel like you could take them serious still and put some I mean, out? I'll, ne I'll never not take A serious. But, um, you know, you, you got to be selective. You got to be selective. Sometimes the vibe just don't align. I interviewed him when he first came back after the accident. Mm -hmm. Big bubble jaw mm -hmm. and everything. He was with John Legend, who had on a cut-off shirt with his navel showing and a beaded jacket. Mm -hmm. And two Indian dudes, like the Dot Indians, the serious ones that know the Cobra shit. Shut up. And, oh, um, you know, I freestyled with him twice. You know what I mean? And you freestyled like, with you? You rapping? Oh yeah, you know, you know, you know, I get in. I, no, you know, my shit was wild, man. Mm -hmm. My shit was wild, and you know what I noticed that you know he hit his written. Mm -hmm. He wasn't really freestyling, but I could tell that. Ye been doing this shit so much that like even with the accident in the jaw, his swag had all the girls in that motherfucker radio station gone. I mean, he had the pink little. Little cardigan, uh, shirt on, sweater, whatever, and shit. Like, you just real. <laughs> and I'm talking about, I'm like, this motherfucker been busting out chicks for a long time. Mm. And you can tell that he's on and off. So I'm thinking as a producer, have you ever been in a position where you like, okay, dog like this one day, then the next day, he might not be on point? Oh, it's a lot of bipolar motherfuckers out there. You know what I mean? Like, most, most artists, most producers are like, a little left of center, a little eccentric, you know what I mean? So, I mean, after a certain amount of time, like, not a lot bothers me, you know what I mean? You know, a lot of people be like, oh man, that nigga's arrogant, he need to be humble. It never bothered me. You ever people's. came back and the song was different? Then it was like he this one with a remix. Hundred percent. Oh, fam, you put some other shit on there. Hundred <laughs> percent. I, I worked with Just Blaze. Just Blaze. Um, Executive produced the last Slaughterhouse album that we worked on. <sighs> <laughs> Just coming with new shit every time. I came to the studio a couple of times and my, my vocals, I don't know if you know what this means, but my vocals were nudged. They were nudged, so they, they take the, he'd take the whole wave and just push it a little bit, whatever way that he felt like I wasn't rapping in the pocket that I should have been rapping in. <laughs> but he just did it. So I come in, and he, th he he didn't think that I would notice it. But that's the first thing I noticed. Man, so I I'm swear, like, yo, something wrong terrible. with my vocal, man. Did you move it? And he was like, oh, yeah, y'all cut it in Pro Tools, man. Mate. And I'm, I'm using Logic, so maybe when I dumped it into Logic, it was just like, yeah, all right, man. All right, cool. So put it back. Put it back. I, I saw <laughs> songs that sounded so sweet, the original sound, and then they put their spin on it. And it's like, fam, it don't even sound like I would want to hear that now. Nah. But sometimes mm -hmm. it's better. Yeah, nah, you know what? I take that back to Soul to Soul. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they probably did that song one way, and then the producer was like, hold on, fam, we're going to go acapella at the beginning first. Mm -hmm. We ain't just going to drop that beat on them like that. See, speaking mm -hmm. of songs, Renegade. Ooh. I could have sworn I remember you on Renegade first. Yep. Okay, so I ain't tripping. Yeah. yeah, so so when I was when I was signed to Sony, um, Eminem was executive producer my album, mm -hmm. and um, Interscope was gonna clear him for one one song, okay, as a feature. So we were looking for a single at that time. We went in and we recorded Renegade, and then we recorded Rock City. Yep. So um, wow, <clears throat> we did we did Renegade. It was kind of like. We didn't think it was like super special like that, probably because we were like looking for something. That's in my particular. favorite. That's my favorite Hard. song, low key. Hard. Yeah, Hard. so it, it was favorite. just like it was just like probably because we, me and him, recorded so much shit like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where we just both just attacking. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, mm, it's cool. And then when he ended up giving it to Hove, and Hove rapped on it, I think it has something to do with Hove's different approach. Yeah. To the way that he attacks the beat, me and M attack it. It's kind of similar, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, you know, like, M is right on the beat, and then Hove is kind of like laid back in the pocket. 
I think it adds a contrast. It just made this, it, it brought it, it brought it up. So, so they I, took your verse out, and did you still get any credit for that song? Nah, what would I get credit for? Because low key shit, you was on that motherfucker. I would have Cat Williams up in that bitch. I was the first, <laughs> damn, I'm the first motherfucker on there. Yeah, once they took once they took my vocals off, I don't have nothing else to do with the song. That's wild. But cause wow. I ain't gonna lie, I would have loved to hear you on that. Cause when I that's one of my favorite songs. Because locally you saw Eminem actually sound better than Hove. Mm -hmm. To me. On there, yeah, you know what he was talking, old. and like seeing somebody at that point where M was not the big superstar worldwide. I'm talking about this was M, Dre M, hardcore M mm -hmm. type shit. Like this was hardcore shit, and mm -hmm. I think you probably would have, you know, still put the exclamation on that motherfucker. Period. Mm -hmm. Because back then, low key, you was on that same level. Like to me, you got a hard part of the street. That's you lyrically, and then you got the worldwide pop shit. Mm -hmm. And when it get to the pop shit, it's kind of hard to come back to the street shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. If you did another mm -hmm. Renegade now, ain't no telling how it would sound. Yeah, because like I said, I went from listening to Rock City to the Four or the Five to Nine and met with KDZ and Juan to mm -hmm. Chips on Pistons. So to me, I feel like that was your superpower. You could maneuver with everybody. And like you got something for everybody, and I feel like that as a rapper, that's the best gift you could have. You should have went to prison. You should have went to prison <laughs> instead of jail. You I should have went, I mean? went to prison. Went to prison. Prison, prison, prison is harder than jail. <laughs> I went to jail for a weekend, and I ain't gonna lie, damn, this ain't like prison. Like it seemed to me like when the rappers go to prison, the album sales go crazy. You meet other rappers in there. So if you would have went to prison, could you imagine who you would have did songs with? Like you and C murder, that would have been like a motherfucker. <laughs> no, no. that would have been some shit. Nick, I, oh it, my it, god, that's strictly for my niggas with a real lyricist on it. Yeah, it's a whole okay. different that's vibe. Okay, See, I, feel you. I mean, it, it's like I feel you. it's like well, if I'm in prison, I want to. I'm doing a song with R. Kelly. I'm doing a song with Young Thug. I'm I'm not fucking around up here with no regular motherfuckers. I'm about to. <laughs> I'm about to put shit together if I'm in prison. They gonna That's have Bill Cosby talking on the <laughs> intro. Prison, nigga. <laughs> the media is. You going for the plug? I'm going for the features. Okay. Now see, it's so funny because my guy was telling me that we was talking about just all the little stuff, beefs and rap beefs, and I was just like, I refuse to partake in them right now. You know, I've, I've been there and did it, but I just feel like it slowed down more the artist growth because your head be so stuck over here. So I hear what you're saying about the prison, but that's back to that. I don't feel negativity sells anything but no I'm talking about why you in there like if T.I. in there on guns he gonna be in there for a minute uh, definitely got a song with T.I. coming but going back to that beef shit <laughs> crazy. let me tell you something the beef shit to me is death shit Facts. this ain't like this ain't like, you know, back when LL and Cool Mo D was beefing and, or even the you know, is over. Uh, like, this ain't that. KRS, YMC, uh, Shannon, ooh. that was hip hop. This is gang shit. I don't think you could beef with a rapper, especially, you know, Detroit rapper, because it. I've never not seen it go street, ever. Like, as soon as you say they name, it's like, it's a rap. And you can blow up off that beef if you ain't had no name out there. Now you know how you, long you gonna be out here, you know? Dangling, you feel me? Like I don't know. I just I that energy, man. Like as I get older, when I was younger, I run head head first to it. Like yeah, it's whatever. That's all of us. But then you get older, you just get to thinking about everything. Like I'm straight. Too many cameras everywhere. I remember when you can actually like do something to somebody. Now since they put them cameras up from having the Super Bowl here, yeah. you can't do nothing no more. Like I'm over here. Shoplifting a family dollar, <laughs> you know what I mean, and uh, you know, because I don't feel you should have to pay for that. No. <laughs> what? You know what I mean, it's certain. I feel it's cheap shit, man. This ain't real toothpaste. Two no, I can, I can sue y'all. The only place I hate is all these. When my wife got all these, I won't go. Cause she expects me like to bag. I, I become a bag. Oh yeah, you gotta bring your own bag. I don't, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Just defeats the purpose of going broke. I came up in that bitch with some pillowcases one time and. Uh, <laughs> 
Motherfuckers just tripping on me. Like, you can't do that. Motherfucker, y'all ain't got shit. It's so bad. <laughs> then it's a quarter for the buggy. It's just too much going on. <laughs> now, peep this, though. You being the age you are, say you get an artist out here. This motherfucker is wild with it. It's like Snapdog. Snapdog still wild with it, ready to box. You don't fuck with Snapdog. He 50 deep. <laughs> when you talk about wild artists, do you think it's your responsibility to calm them down when they sign to you under the label? It's de I, well, I would definitely feel like they on my watch, so to speak. You know what I mean? So once I bring you in, you like family. You know what I mean? So I'm definitely not going to stand around and watch you crash out. You know what I mean? I mean, I think the OG should be held to a standard to answer your question. I don't think, you know, like we should be beholden to every decision that they make. They're going to do what they want to do. But we're responsible for giving them the information based off the mistakes that we made. You know what I mean? But see, sure. I, I look at it like this. Like, yo, Gotti throwing 42 Doug a welcome home party at the biggest place you could do it at, Little C's Arena. Mm -hmm. That was some gangster shit. Mm -hmm. that's, that's like, I love you like my son. Because when you look at 42 Doug, you know, you'd be like, damn, little dog done came up mm -hmm. a long motherfucking way. Back when I was young and shit, the only little niggas I knew was Gary Coleman and Emmanuel <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> Wasn't no hardness to the niggas, man. <laughs> you you 20, 24, 42 Doug is the hardest Gary Coleman you're going to get in this <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> this nigga's not bullshit. The braids, the crinkles. Hell the no. nigga is so serious. He like, and then he got the little Barry Sanders walk and shit, little stubby knee nigga. So, you know, I just look at it like when Shout you got. Shout out Man, yeah, dog, the motherfucker is, man, it's ridiculous how much talent we got here, but. I feel like we we got to keep y'all niggas in the yard because when we let you out, y'all biting. And and there's so many people that's hating on you and so many people that love you, it's hard for you to understand you can't be everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When you talk about the T Grizzly, when you talk about Vezo, Peasy, you know, you know, oh yeah, these niggas got some armor. They got some motherfucking artillery, but my thing is, nigga, it's it's about making the music, ain't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, man, I'm about to go pop a motherfucker. Hey, hey, rap about it, though. Because guess what? The cameras is out, fam. And the camera's been on you ever since you made a hit record. Mm -hmm. So you can't do shit. And then I know you don't want to send your man out to go do shit for you and fuck up everything. And that's what we're going through in the rap game. I feel like our culture do got to change because it's like I'll sit down with my young homies and, you know, I kick them some game as far as what not to do. And they kind of look at you as you the corny nigga for telling mm -hmm. me not to do the dumb right. stuff. But then the homies that's telling them to do it, they like, yeah, this is what we should be doing. Right. And they be like, man. More value you know, in the people pushing you to the bullshit than yeah, it is right. in the people that's leading you around the bullshit. The people candy coat too much shit. I think we need to be, hey fam, you about to be around a whole bunch of dick <laughs> and ball. <clears throat> if you don't get your life here. right, fam. <laughs> right. Now, the question <laughs> is, that's, that's a real topic that I've been seeing Food on the internet. This fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> if, do you feel <clears throat> artists trying to come out now, if they're already not established, there's an age limit on them? Not anymore. So there's no no expiration date. I don't think so. No, I'm right. right. I only hear it when I come back to Detroit. Like when I'm in New York and all of that, they praise the OGs. Mm -hmm. You know, they praise the new cats that want to come up that's older. But here it's just like us oh, young nigga world. You know what I'm saying? But I just think we have such an ignorant mentality in our culture is trash. You can't be it's talking like that about everywhere. You can't right. be talking about the same shit, though, man. Yeah, <laughs> like, like you know. the street shit, <laughs> yeah, and the <laughs> professionalism or the but talent. Like they don't that, know how to separate that shit. But look at all the mafia cats, shit. the mobster guys. They was all fifty and up doing gangster shit. Who's gonna tell them they can't talk about some gangster shit? If Big Meech come out next month, which mm -hmm. I think he will, and he started rapping, what is we gonna think of Big Meech? He about to tell us some gangster shit about how he was getting them things. But you never, you never heard Big Meech rap at all. But you saying what I think he gonna talk about is that. But I'm talking about you've never heard that Big Meech. If he rapped right now, Big Meech is gonna sound like Mo D. 
Oh my he, God. He gonna, he gonna be real. He gonna be, let me tell you about what's going on. It ain't gonna be no, like, how old is me? Me, me by my age. I'm 54. You know what I mean? We eat course babies. So, you know, I know how the mindset is. You wanna hear the stories and you wanna hear the sweet shit, but still remember it's the flow that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. That motherfucker might come out, da ha ha da <laughs> That motherfucker might come with some old shit. And you gonna listen to him because it's like, why? But look at Master P. Master P to me was the greatest one to really switch over and be current. And he was like, the whole time he's my mama age, my mama gonna be rapping Master nah, P. Nah, Master P was like early 30s. Yeah, but still, he was but, my mom. But, but no, nah, nigga, he 50. But when listen, he came in concert. When he came on, my mom would be rapping Master P, and I'd be like, Mom, you not cool. <laughs> not knowing he the same age. Did I'm you see him at the Fox Theater? Uh-uh. Yeah. Fam, the tanks shut the fuck down. Yeah. I mean, he sounded just like that. But nigga, he can't move like... Like like five songs like how he used to do. The motherfucker used to bop, man. That motherfucker was over there sitting in the chair. That nigga did that nigga did that nigga had a you feel me? That nigga had a twenty city tour. That bitch ended after two. When he just sat sitting in the chair and talking about some uh I'm thinking about a a patient sitter. You know what I'm saying? But he's a brilliant man and low key songs that last forever. Mm -hmm. That's what he got, you know. I'm, I'm a big fan of Master P. Wish I could have got some of that foolish money, but um, mm -hmm. that's another story. Sexuality in songs. Do you like hearing it? Are you saying it's the culture? Sexuality in songs, like you know. Come on, big old freak. Uh, I'm it's gonna make a big old freak. Uh, I'm gonna make a pay for some pussy. You know. Hey, that's the that's the <laughs> shit you hear right now. Suck a bitch like toes. Are you, you talking about from women to the women? Man, all these motherfuckers is rapping. Everybody rapping kind of kind of mm -mm. prostitutish. Even mm -mm. some of the dudes now. Mm -mm. mm -hmm. Got saucy Santana out there and shit. He said saucy. <laughs> <laughs> like sexuality in songs. Are we over sexualized? No, no. Do mm -mm. you like hearing it? Uh. Well, I don't. I don't really have an opinion on it. I don't really have an opinion. See, man, the way I feel like shit is now because of the internet, it's like every human can fucking curate their own existence, mm -hmm. their own lives. Like you can't, there used to be a point in time where things get marketed to you and it's being pushed in your face all the time mm -hmm. and you can't escape it. Now, they can't do that. So if I don't want to hear something, I don't have to listen to it. You know what I mean? Sure. So, um, I Prime do, example, I'm gonna give you a prime example. Erotic City, Prince. Mm -hmm. All of my purple life. We up in that bitch. This is mm -hmm. a whole sex song. We rocking. I'm not saying that there'll ever be another prince, but when you hear it in hip hop and you hear the sex talk, like we ain't even talk about like how, hey, we want some pussy, which I love that shit. Mm -hmm. Now when you hear a song about sex, do it make you be like, okay, I'm gonna listen to it, or it's like, Eh, it ain't even where I used to be I mean, at. It de definitely don't make me say I'm about to listen to it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not for me. Yeah. It's not the same it make vibe. It for me. I swear it's a it's a way that you make a sexual song mm -hmm. and it's a way that you make an ignorant song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanna say like ignorant, like once you say pussy in a song, it kinda like you destroyed just being a song. I'm looking at it like That's okay, too direct, right? yeah, it's straight on mm -hmm. it. But you got somebody like Prince, who can say any motherfucking thing, and that bitch is gonna be a hit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So now I just think that some people have gotten more aggressive yeah. with the lyrics and don't give a fuck. Not because once you say "sucker bitch toes," "pussy pink," what's hard after that? Booty hole brown. Like, what, what, where do you go? I thought you was about to pull out the lyrics and keep going. Yeah. Like, Damn, really? but, but you know, I like sexy red, though. Yeah. But oh, see, God. you know what? So I ain't gonna lie to you. Sexy red, <laughs> real <laughs> close to running out of lyrics. Because you can't, where you going after this? Like, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna lie. She keep coming up with the little hooky hooks, but I'm just like, okay. You trend. What she be saying? You know what I'm saying. She trend. No, I don't. Yeah, you about to say that. Tread, you know what I'm no, I'd be ignorant. I don't, I'm not a fan of her. 
I think that she gonna go lesbo I feel like in, a, I, in a minute. I do feel like our our culture. I feel it's over uh, sexualized because it's just like that's all it is to talk about. Like, not, not all you niggas ain't getting as much pussy. Let's just be blunt. Second off, it's just like shit's just a wash. Five million. You doing a song with non sex? I mean, I would do it for a million because. But watch this. <laughs> I feel he can still make good music. Like. I don't really look at him as ignorant. I think he do things for attention. But we talking about making music so together. So one million? Bro. You said one million? I would make music with anybody. No, you, no, no, you said one million. million. I heard the one million. Yeah, I heard it too. All right, one million. <laughs> Nine sex? No. You ain't doing it? <laughs> no, 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 no. See, but I'm looking at the artistry. Forget who they are because if that's the case, we shouldn't work. I shouldn't act with none of these actors right now. You know, my thing is, I heard a story about certain artists like when you meet up with, it, with them in the studio, they got certain shit they do. Like I know- Rituals. Yeah, I know mm -hmm. some artists that be naked in the studio. That was one no, of their rituals. Like who, like who? Yeah. Tony, Tony, Tony back in the day. <laughs> I love Tony, Tony. They used to, I mean, Dwayne, my boy, he told me. I interviewed him. He was like, yeah, it's true. We used to be butt ass naked. In the studio? In the studio. For so years. While, while recording? Shit. It never rains in Southern Cap dick out. <laughs> Wow. Oh, Asshole on seat. Wow. Uh -uh. That was their vibe. Mm -hmm. They wanted to vibe <laughs> fully with the, I guess, whatever. That was their thing. Butt ass naked in the studio. You I know got what a, mean? I, I got a question. It worked. <laughs> Motherfuckers made hits. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking about it. I was like, it worked. <laughs> it worked. I, I, got a, I, I, I got a question. I think anybody who's watching is going to want to hear this question. I, if you had to pick five people, past, present, future, Alive, dead, to do a song with, and one female in that five. Who would those five people be? Damn, just one. I swear. Um, <laughs> one female. Hmm. Did it have to be a rapper? Not be anybody. Yeah, Nina Simone. Oh, that's my baby that's right there. Nina. Stevie Wonder. Tupac. Fabulous. That Stevie probably can still happen. Mm, yeah. All day day. Probably Prince. Prince. Um, Biggie. I figured that one. And I got one more, right? Yep. Yeah. Big L. Okay. Oh. That's my number one. <laughs> Big L? I went, I, sam I did a Big L sample. I actually went, uh, flew to New York, shot the video. I used Check My Grind. The spotlight is his. It ain't uh, the spotlight is mine. It ain't his no more. I linked up with Big L brother. He let me shoot it in front of the mirror. We kept in touch since then. But that's my number one. Big L, hands down. Great. But you just named like a fucking album that needs mm -hmm. to happen. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. You got a Tupac real. story. Hmm? You got a Tupac story. I never met him. I work. I'm working, I'm working, at, I'm working like at City one Airport. One or two generations before. City mm -hmm. Airport. I'm working at Little Caesars. City Airport. He comes in there with the first click he was with, first album, Tupacalypse Now. Mm -hmm. He comes and sit down, got on cross colors, the big ass jeans, the whole nine with the big joker shit. Mm -hmm. And his boy is fucking with everybody in the motherfucking airport. You as an artist, have you ever been in a position where you couldn't control your niggas? Not really, not really. But I mean, I've been in situations where I've had like those couple of friends that when we go out somewhere, you got to keep eye on them. You can't let them wander off somewhere because next thing you know, it's commotion over there and it's never their fault. You know what I mean? You find yourself in like a situation where you helping them. You know what I mean? I had those kinds of friends, but just in terms of like being somewhere and we're all like playing a position, I've been pretty lucky in that regard, you know what I mean? But I've seen those situations where guys couldn't handle their guys, but I try not to bring like, you know who the real crazies are, you know what I mean? Like, you just gotta really know when they when they too, too far gone, you just take them and put them in certain situations and expect for them to be anything other than what they just naturally are. Right. Man, I got invited to uh, Coast for Kids finally, and uh, they had us perform, you know, come do all that. And I brought one guy with me. I ain't been invited since. <laughs> what did he, he do though? Just saw somebody in here, you know. 
At Coach for Kids? Yes. Like, come on. Oh, it, it, when you watch the video, you see me on stage. I'm literally doing a live interview. You know, it's all a live broadcast. I'm sitting there like, you know, uh, text this number for Coach for Kids. Then you see my man come behind me in security like, and I'll go like this. And it's a whole bunch of commotion. I'm like, damn. I ain't get anybody back since then, bro. So that, that taught me a lot of who you have around when you're doing business. Hey, that was part one. But part two, something crazy. Flow, the hose is out of control. Fly like I'm out of this globe. That's why they swallow it whole. I got that, that violent flow, that bottle control. Got me wildin' out on this song. I probably explode. Do the math, Mozzie equals the road. The body equals the code. Fever need to be in that road. Chief in that drove up. Why you riding a bucket? I'm high, I'm like, fuck it, I'm blow. Got my eye on my duck. It's living life on my toes.